We stand a good couple of minutes on Carl's doorstep, ringing the doorbell over and over. I can hear the heavy beat of some hip-hop song through the door, and ground. I swear the windows look like they're about to bust out from how much they're shaking. Exactly. Uns intensifies. <laughs> finally, I send him a text, at, and that's when the music finally stops and the door swings open. As it does, TJ and I are blasted with a wave of pot and just a touch of booze lingering underneath. Carl grins at us, his eyes bloodshot and fur must up. What the fuck took you guys so long to get here? TJ frowns, rubbing his nose inconspicuously. I don't think I've ever seen Carl this far gone. I stare at him as he stares back at us, his grin never wavering. I finally break the silence. Are you okay? That's just what Chase says in this route the most. <laughs> just checking on people, never sure. The, like, Chase is not very, like, known to do that. So <laughs> this, this is very kind of him. It's probably his nicest route. Carl suddenly gets a very serious look on his face. Chase. Gravely, he reaches out to put a, uh, both of his paws on, his sh on my shoulders. I have... He smirks, then sets his face sternly again. Never felt better. He brings me into a hug and whispers fiercely into my ear. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> he suddenly shoves me back and whirls on TJ, who cringes. Carl goes after him, sweeping him off his feet like the Lynx is his brand new bride. Carl! Get inside before you get a heat stroke, fluff cheeks. <laughs> I stand there on the doorstep as Carl takes the cat inside, TJ throwing me a wide-eyed look over the ram's broad shoulder. I stare back, wondering if this was such a good idea before stepping in. Pot smell aside, the coolness of the mansion is a welcome relief to the quickly rising heat behind me. I'm just in time to see Carl toss TJ onto a two-cushion couch before flopping onto a bigger one across from it. He smiles at me and pats the cushion next to him. <laughs> no. <laughs> I sit down on the last cushion, leaving a space between the two of us. I'm just a little worried about how handsy he's being right now. <laughs> Carl shrugs and kicks up his feet on the cushion be between us, tapping me with his hooves. Just, just, just fucking points his feet at us on the couch. <laughs> it's audacious. We sit there for an agonizingly awkward ten seconds before TJ clears his throat. Uh, so, Carl, uh, how have you been? Carl ro rolls his head on his shoulders to snap his gaze in the direction of TJ, who gulps. TJ, I've been just peachy. You get me? TG, I've been peachy. <laughs> TG, I've been peachy. TJ's ears twitch. Y yes? Super. super -y. Carl giggles quietly to himself. <laughs> he stares at the ceiling for a while, continuing to tap me with his hooves. I look down and see that they're leaving hoof-shaped prints of white dust on my pants. Man, I'm glad you guys are here. I thought I was going to go crazy. How come? Carl interlocks his fingers behind his head. This house, man. You go crazy in it when no one's around. Flynn spent the night, but then he had to go to work. Ah. TJ seems to have run out of things to say leaning back on the couch as his tail twitches around nervously. Carl doesn't seem to mind, though, staring peacefully at the ceiling. I exchange glances with TJ, who shrugs worriedly at me. I look at the massive flat screen. You want to watch something? Carl fl flicks his eyes to the TV. Ugh. Have you seen the new... Lucho Lobo movie? I have to think about that. 
Not since last summer, I think. I haven't. It's the fucking shit, dudes. <laughs> Carl sticks his legs in the air, swiveling on his butt before launching himself off the couch to land on his hooves awkwardly. He stumbles, falling into TJ's couch. I thought it, I was read that at first. <laughs> <laughs> I read crotch at first. Yeah. The lynx tries to steady him, but the ram is off before he can, grabbing the remote. Suddenly he spins around and tosses his phone at me, and I have to lunge to catch it. Chase, please, or us a goddamn pizza. I'm starving. Uh, what? I stare at his phone. He sighs loudly at me. Uh, G the Giano app? Duh. It takes me a second to find it in the sea of random game apps. It's 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 like three scrolls over. Yeah. It's, it's just full. Just walls of random icons. It's stressful. Oh, so uh, what do you guys want? I'll shove anything from Giano's into my fat face. I stare at him. So order anything. Okay. I end up letting TJ pick the topping since he's got that special dietary uh, dietary where he can't eat gluten. Celiac disease. Once I've ordered the extra large pizza, Carl's already started up the movie. I didn't know anyone delivered out here. Carl sits down with a beer in his hand and I wonder if I should tell him to not drink anymore. Honestly, I don't know if the way he's acting is more due to the pot or the drink. He grins. That's what's so great about Janos. They'll deliver anywhere if you pay. He takes a swig and belches. Price of delivery is the same as the fucking pizza, though. He stares at me before pointing at his beer. You want one? I glance at TJ, who's been staring hard at the screen. Uh, maybe I'll have one with the pizza. Me and Tej were... Having, have some yard work to do for Janice. Carl wrinkles his nose. Lame. You want to go with us, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> Carl thinks, then gives a massive shrug. I can tug along. May not be able to do any real work, though. He pats his stomach. Swear to God, I'll hurl. That's fine. TJ smiles, but... Carl seems to be watching the movie now, which is already a few minutes into the intro. <clears throat> the pizza doesn't arrive for another hour, and when it finally does, the slices are almost room temperature. Still, with the pizza, beer, and a movie, I start to kind of enjoy myself. By the end of it, Carl seems to have sobered up a little bit. Not a whole bunch, but to the point where he's at least... coherent. He turns off the TV in size. Flat on his back, on the couch at this point, his fet locks across my lap. I'm fucking stuffed. <laughs> I agree, and now I'm feeling even less inclined to go over to Janice's place. TJ has pulled out his phone, and now he's staring at it with his ears lowered. I'm about to ask him what's wrong, but that's when Carl nudges me with his leg. Hey, you guys want to play, play a game? game? <laughs> <laughs> I look at him cautiously. What kind of game? Um, you have to like take a key out of your friend's stomach and like <laughs> you know you gotta you gotta find it using X-rays and then like you know then you gotta like run across like a layer of acid and like. What you do is you, we all take our keys, we put them in a bowl, and <laughs> that's a different type of game. <laughs> There's only three of us. <laughs> <laughs> that's a pineapple upside down type of game. Carl looks around, then finds the row of three bottles on the ground next to the couch. Two of them empty, one half empty. Never have I ever. Oh. This is a weird game to play with three players. <laughs> yeah. TJ gives a nervous laugh. But Carl, I don't drink. Give it a try. I frown, giving Carl a look. Or we could just do ten fingers. You don't have to drink for that one. Carl pouts. 
Wow, you're boring as hell today, Chase. All right, we'll do both. You are asking to do ten fingers, bullshit. He struggles to sit up, burping again while he does. He leans over with a groan and picks up his beer. <sighs> okay, I'll go first. I hold up ten fingers and TJ does the same, somewhat reluctantly. Never have I ever... Carl seems to think hard, then grins. Had sex. TJ's ears flatten Aww. and I glare at Carl. Oh no. Really? We're going there already? Carl shrugs. What? That's the first question everyone asks. I lower a finger, still glaring. Isn't this game about getting to getting to know things about people that you don't already know about? I look over at TJ, not surprised to see all of his fingers still up, though he's still blushing. <clears throat> I'm surprised you haven't, though. You've had girlfriends. Carl sneers at me. Turns out having to lift up my own gut so they can suck me off <laughs> turns them off. Never gone past that. So they still sucked you off. Blowjobs don't count. Uh, yeah, they do. It's called oral sex. Nah, man. I suddenly become very aware of a beat red lynx sitting across from us. <laughs> what a discussion to have in front of TJ. <laughs> I cough loudly and sit up straight. Thinking, uh, trying to think of something that's interesting, but still G-rated for TJ. Never have I ever been in a fight. A physical fight, I mean. Carl takes a drink. TJ's fingers stay up. Who did you fight? The fuck have you been? Remember Clint? Oh yeah, when, when Leo saved him. Because we yeah. were a little coward and ran away. Oh yeah. Getting bullied. A fight. Yeah, TJ I, starts I, to lower his finger too, then stops. Every time I've encountered this game, I never remember. You put your fingers down if you've done it? I think, I think yeah, every time... I think you say something you have not done as the de declaration person. Okay. And, and everybody else puts a finger down or drinks, depending on which version of the game you're playing, if they have done it. Hmm... Never have I ever. It, it, it wasn't until it wasn't until Carl responded that I was like, "Oh, he's surprised Carl hasn't had sex." I thought he was saying that he's surprised TJ hasn't had sex. Well, he's not, also had girlfriends. I'm not surprised TJ has had like he's not had sex. Carl's, mm, I mean, I don't know, I don't know what he does, but he he brought the he so, brought that up in his like he brought the never have I ever had sex before. Yeah, which means that he that means he hasn't. That means we were his first uh, in that timeline. With whatever level of stuff we got up to. But it also wasn't him, so that's even kind of worse. Oh, no, yeah. Uh, it's been a while now. Was it, did, we, did we get up to anything while he was not possessed at all? No, we just cuddled. Yeah. Kind of kissed a little bit. Cuddle. Yeah. That's, we just, get, I mean, that's just fine. get fucking buried in Carl and just can't get up for eight hours. <laughs> that's, that's also fine. That's not a bad situation. <laughs> Well, he mostly attacked us. We didn't really fight back, so it's not really a fight? Whoa! Uh? Wait, 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 hold on. In relation to, 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 to who? Like, like, not... Grab him by the neck, throw him to the ground, kick him if he tries to get back up. This is some shit happening. This game's up to some shit. So TJ said he had a fight with who? Well, it's, uh, so Clint was picking on both of them in that flashback. Clint, okay. But no, this is, uh, I think this is internal monologue masquerading as dialogue choices. That's actually a reference to the stuff with Sydney. Because Chase is claiming that he's never been in a fight, but we've seen stuff. Yes. That sure seems like a fight. 
In fact, that seems like this seems like the, his plan he had going in with Sydney. Grab him by the neck, throw him to the ground, kick him if he tries to get back up. They seem like they're in order. Yeah, I don't think this is. I don't think these are choices. They're doing a they're doing a meta thing here. I don't think it's even worth saving here technically because I don't think this is a choice. This is like an order of this. This is like a sequence of that you read in that order and it makes sense in that order. Yeah, they're all equivalent, like equivalently heinous parts of a specific event. This game's up to some shit. Uh, kick him if he tries to get back up. <laughs> Carl shrugs. Me and Flynn have gotten into it before. Well, you already took a drink, so... I look over at TJ. Your turn. TJ looks, uh, looks off to the side, seeming to think hard. Never have I ever failed a test. TJ grins. I lower a finger, smirking, but Carl lets out a snort. Cute. The amount of disdain in his voice has me looking over at him, but he's already chugging down his beer. His burp seems to shake the couch. All right. Never have I ever kissed a dude. Carl. What? I've never actually seen you kiss Leo. I, th I thought they were like super grossly affectionate in front of each other. I mean, the, the next line. So, oh, wait, maybe I have. Mm. He shrugs again. I lower a finger, rolling my eyes. TG, of course, doesn't. As I'm trying to think of my own question, I suddenly see some, I feel something warm press against the side of my face. I blanch away out of instinct and turn to find Carl with his eyes closed and lips puckered. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Carl! TJ sits on the couch, his face a portrait of comically cartoonish shock. Alright. Now I have. <laughs> Carl takes a big gulp of beer. I'm not sure how to react, but TJ's reaction is enough to make the whole thing seem funny. Instead of, like, sexual harassment. I mean, you can't do it after the question's been asked, right? Carl puts his chin on a fist, fluttering his eyes in a way he probably thinks is seductive. <laughs> you can look it up if you want. I shake my head. Wiping the side of my face as I try to think. Never have I ever flown in an airplane. Whoa. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just it's just surprising when you're like, but at this age. Carl and TJ both lower a finger. Really? That's crazy. I shrug. Hardly ever been out of the state of my life. That's tragic. Your family's rich. You can't... <laughs> say anything it kind of is and so it goes the game continues for another 20 minutes most of the questions innocent enough still i notice that every time tj takes his turn carl gets more and more agitated never have i ever done drugs never have i ever been late to class never have i ever gotten less than a minus in a class oh my goodness still i can tell that tj is directing it mostly at me Partly because he's being mischievous, and partly because I think he's genuinely trying to figure me out. Carl's mood continues to sour, though, and it all it seems to build until the, the sixth round. Mmm. 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 Kind of it's kind of a rude thing to say, This is CJ. a bad- from what we know about Carl, this is a bad call. Yeah. Also, 20 it took you 20 minutes to get to round six? Whenever I hear about time, the amount of time anything takes in any story, this is just like across the board. I always, I almost always like have a reflexive like disagreement. I'm like, how, how, how? In this case, I'm like, how did it take 20 minutes to play six rounds of Never Have I Ever? I, you just go around the board, so it should be like three questions, three minutes, four minutes tops. Yeah, I don't know how. Never have I ever been in a car accident. I lower a finger. You've crashed before. I mock glare at him. Why do you automatically assume it was my fault? Oh, sorry, I... I mean, uh... 
My dad was driving and we got rear-ended. Oh. That's when I noticed that Carl hasn't spoken at all since the question was asked. Oop. I look over at him and see that he's got the bottle resting on his knee as he watches TJ. I lean over to poke at him. You okay? He glances at me before turning back to TJ. You knew I'd been in an accident. TJ looks at Carl, confused. I did? Yeah, I told you at the motel when you first got here. Oh, yeah, sorry, I forgot about that. Yeah, okay. TJ continues to look confused. Carl stares at his lap for a while, and I start to wonder if the game is over. Then he looks up and stares at TJ, rubbing his chin. Hmm. He seems to be thinking hard. Hmm. Never have I ever... I was gonna get mean. We wait. Carl smiles. Never have I ever killed someone. Carl! Mm. Carl, that kills people. <laughs> that's not... It's not... Oh, boy. <laughs> that's an escalation. <laughs> Yeah, that's a very insensitive. Yep. That'd be quite a thing to ask in any context, but in this specific narrative, you're like, um, um, dude. Ima um. So, so imagine doing this at like a casual party, and you're like, never have I ever killed someone, and you know, like, like one person is like, maybe you get a cool story out of it. <laughs> we just know that specifically with TJ, there's just a horrifying background of this question of whether or not he did something. Yeah, no, why everyone's th so mad that at is him. directly aimed at him. What follows is dead silence. Carl stares straight at TJ, still with a smile on his face. TJ still looks confused. That's a weird thing to say. It is a weird thing to say. Is it? TJ freezes up, as if ice-cold water had been dumped over his head. I look at Carl slowly, but he's not looking at me at all. TJ's clenched paws rest in his lap, his face expressionless, almost, as if we both realize what Carl's getting at. We sit in that silence for what feels like almost a minute. Carl finally breaks the frozen portrait that we're all in, leaning back into the back of the couch. You know, my life has been going downhill since that happened. TJ and I don't say anything, both of us watching Carl. School, grades, drugs, whatever. I don't know. Seems like it all started after whatever it was that happened. Carl looks pointedly at TJ again. Carl. My voice comes out shocked and bewildered. That seems to get through to him a little bit, his long ears flicking down briefly. TJ continues to stare back at him, and I'm reminded of how he looked when Flynn was having a go at him. Carl finally looks down, away from TJ. So, I was in the crawl space the other day, and I found an old letter from Sydney. I don't say anything. Neither does TJ. Carl waits a while, then goes on. I haven't opened it. It said it was a treasure hunt. On the front. A treasure hunt. Sydney absolutely loved treasure hunts. He was always making them in his spare time. They were usually pretty bad, and the prizes at the end were always pretty awful. It would always take some convincing on his part to get us to go on one. I don't know why I have it, but it's made me... Carl stops talking and closes his eyes, pressing himself deeper into the soft cushions of the couch. Maybe if we knew what happened, we could fix some of our problems. TJ finally stands up, and Carl's eyes snap open when he does. I watch him, too, having no idea what he's about to do. Because of the look on his face, I wonder if he's about to actually do something violent, 
attack Carl or something. His expression is dark, not like I've ever seen him, even when Flynn was yelling at him. Instead, though, he just stands there for a few moments, staring at Carl. Carl looks away again, his ears lowered. Self-improvement starts with realizing what the actual problem is, Carl. That... That didn't sound like TJ at all. Not even the voice. Carl seems shocked as well, as he finally looks up at the lynx. Stop blaming others and start blaming yourself. His voice is calm and smooth, but ice cold. TJ turns on his heel and starts towards the door, his fur fluffed out. I finally snap out of it and stand up as TJ opens the door. I take one last look at Carl as he's slumped on the couch, his head down. I... I'll call you later, okay, Carl? Carl doesn't say anything. So with that, I hurry out the door that TJ left open. Carl, why? He's he's wasted, but jeez. The uh, it's one of our only times we've gotten to hang out with Carl at all, too. Besides his route, because he's always missing or something, and it was bad. Yeah, he's one of like the least explored characters, I think. And that interaction was not at all pleasant. I catch up to the Lynx about a hundred yards down the road, trying to match his brisk pace. It's late afternoon at this point, and the heat hits me like a ton of bricks. Sweat already threatens to drip off my chin as I approach TJ. He slows down when he hears me panting, letting me catch up. We walk in silence for a good 15 minutes, and I almost jump when TJ finally speaks up. Can you believe he did that? It takes I take a few deep breaths, gathering the time I need to form a response. I I think he was just really high and drunk. TJ shakes his head. He knew what he was saying. Sure, but but his inhibitions are down. That doesn't that's not a great response because it just implies that he's always thinking about it but normally knows better than to say something about it, which is just a bad thought to have. It's like in the back of his mind. But sure. it's just there like festering until he has like the courage or like the outlet to say it. Yeah. Which is which is not a good indication of like how a person actually feels about any given situation. You just don't want to be reminded that everyone's thinking about this thing all the time, but just choosing not to say it out of like protecting his feelings or something. It's just like every once in a while that you you kind of like accidentally splurge something you've thought about for a long time, and you're like, damn it, damn it, damn it. Where it's like there, there's a a big like kerfuffle between like your brain and your heart when you say something you like didn't mean to say. It's there out in the open, and the other people like are there Can't to take witness that it. Back. Exactly, exactly. Where it's like it's there now. It's gonna have to be dealt with. Like every people, like everybody has something like that, where it's just like you have to have a candid moment to like release mm -hmm. it in front of everybody else. TJ isn't as upset as I thought he would be, at least not in the way I thought he would be. That's a weird sentence. <laughs> that is a very weird sentence. TJ isn't as upset as I thought he would be, at least not in the way I thought he would be. I try not to re when I'm writing. I try not to repeat like. Like, B. Like, you shouldn't repeat words like that. It reminds me of when I rephrase a sentence mentally halfway through writing it, and so I end up writing an entire phrase twice and then catch it way later. You're, like, editing an essay. Or, like, yeah. you, you, like you, you copy-paste something into a text message, and you're like, oh, that's repetitive, and mm -hmm. you kind of, like, have to, like, take words out. Or like, he probably did this, probably. And it's like, oh, fuck. That word fits two different places, or, and I or, use both. Or, like, and is in, like, four times in one sentence. And you're like, <laughs> gotta take some of those ands out. Gotta make that a separate sentence. Gotta, like... Da -da 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 -da. Coward. <laughs> run on forever. And, 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 Write and, a and, and. Write three-hour run-on sentence. <laughs> Dude, like, some of my favorite authors have, like, sentences that are, like, three-fourths of a page long. Bless their heart. We're back at the sign. 
<laughs> right on top of his head, like a little fucking <laughs> little t little hat, like a little uh, um, fez. The Just sign placement kind of makes me wish he was slightly to the side. <laughs> no, I think it, honestly, if I was doing this, I probably would have put him <laughs> to, the, right to the side because yeah. of that sign specifically. But Instead, he seems more angry than anything. Because it's under a sign. <laughs> I think it's because he's t he's been talking to talking to Flynn. Who knows what he's been? Who knows what he's been saying to him? That could definitely be the case. TJ finally sighs and stares at the ground, his ears falling. I can tell he's about to finally start crying, so I quickly put my arm around his shoulders. Finally. Hey, it's okay. He was seriously drunker than I've ever seen him. He's not going to remember any of this. He doesn't look up. TJ, you are a huge reason why we've all stuck together at this point. TJ doesn't say anything, and I see his eyes watering up. I could be making it worse, but I give his shoulder another squeeze. You're the glue. And like you said, Carl's blaming his own problems on everyone else. This has nothing to do with you. TJ sighs, leaning against me a little. I take this as a good sign and nudge him. Listen, let's get to Janice's place and get those chores out of the way. After that, we can get some ice cream at Ray's, okay? All right. TJ lets out a small laugh and we continue down the road for another 10 feet like that. That's like three steps. <laughs> then he suddenly pulls away from me, faces me, and hugs me tight. He buries his face in my chest and I feel his fingers clench into, into the back of my shirt. He holds me like that for a long time. We get to Janice's house a good half an hour later. Me covered in sweat, TJ air airing out his shirt. It's five at this point, and the sun is still pounding down on the back of my head like a lead weight. Janice opens the door about almost the second we knock, and I can tell immediately that something's off. First of all, she's got no pants on. Oh no! I catch a glimpse of her large white panties before oh, I, no. my, I snap my eyes back up, staring hard at the coyote's face. <sighs> I can't see TJ, but the way, but the by the funny way he's breathing, I'm pretty sure he's noticed as well. Yeah. Janice spreads out her hands, grinning. Well, I'll be. You made it. We gawk at her for a few seconds before TJ finally squeaks out. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, of course. Um. Janice suddenly steps forward toward the lynx and cups his face in, his ha in her hands. I keep my eyes up, trying to focus on her face. She squishes TJ's face to the point where his lips purse out a little bit. You, TJ, are a lifesaver. You know that. She says it sincerely, and I can see TJ trying to pull back. Unfortunately, it also looks like the coyote has a good grip on his face because everything but his head moves back. Uh, uh thank you, Dennis. TJ tries to speak from his squished face. Uh, Janice? Uh, what did you want us to do today? I break in, hoping to move her attention away from ripping TJ's cheeks off. She seems to be enjoying the tufts of fur there. Oh. Chase. You're here too? Yeah, we're gonna work on it together. Well, alright. How about I head out there and show you two? My eyes flick down to her bottom half for just a second and I immediately regret it. You... You, uh... There's no way around it. You want to get dressed first? Hmm? Janice looks down. Oh, that. Well, I just got to apologize now. I was in the middle of getting ready for work. I just forgot what I was doing. I glance at TJ, then quickly back to the coyote. Oh, well, we can wait. Nonsense. It'll take a sec. 
I'm left open-mouthed, following the coyote automatically as TJ follows closely behind me. A quick glance around reassures me that there isn't anyone around at the moment, but if someone does come around... Janice marches us out the back, to the few wooden remnants of the shed we moved earlier. She points at the ground. I want you two to dig a hole right here. TJ stays just slightly behind me, as if using me as a shield to, sh to Janice's shameless immodesty. A hole? Yep. In a rectangle. From here to here. Like a grave? Are we, dealing, are we digging a grave for, like, uh, for your your Like coat? six feet by like three feet. Yeah. About six Deep feet Deep enough down. to keep the animals out. Yeah, Be gotta dig a better grave than what Samuel got. Yeah, three feet at minimum. Is this uh, is this Julian's grave? <laughs> Janice marks a line in the dirt with his with her foot before walking about five feet in the other direction and marking another line. And three feet wide, at least three feet deep, if not more. I nod through her instructions, just trying to get through this as quickly as possible. Okay, uh, what are we doing this for? Janice stops, scratching the back of her head. Hmm. A pool. Good to have a pool back here. A coffin-shaped pool. Definitely a pool. A pool? Yeah, a nice little pool. She grins at us, and I quickly nod at her. Okay, we'll get right to work. Shovels in the garage, right? I'm doing everything I can to get her back inside. Is she gonna not say the sho shovels? Okay. Yep. Need anything else? I can make you lemonade before I leave. It's extra poisoned. Actually, I'm worried now about the cookies and and, Ch and Chase throwing up and everything. Maybe it was a hallucination stress dream. Maybe it was the bad water. Maybe Janice is fucking crazy and he saved TJ's life with a stupid prank. Well, <laughs> it's a nice diversion that like 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 the water was sprayed on the cookies. Yeah. Maybe they were actually immensely horrible, and the reason that Chase got sick was not because of the water on top, because of the cookies themselves, I'm just, which I'm, no one ate besides Chase. I'm just extremely paranoid about everything involving Janice because of the meat that we briefly encountered in the other route. I'm just like, what the fuck? Nah, we'll just get water if we need it. Well, alright. No need to finish it today if you can't. I know how hard it is. Yeah, we'll just can't wait to come back a third day. Janice turns to leave. On my vacation, yeah. all the way from college. But not before reaching out and pinching TJ's cheek almost viciously. Ooh. He squints his eyes, ears flattening as he just stands there and takes it. And with that, she, she hums her way back to the house. I wait until I hear the door close. Oh my god, she's gone insane. TJ stays quiet, staring at the spot on the ground that Janice marked out. Seriously, uh, maybe we should go. No, no, she's probably just having another off day or something. I shake my head. And this is definitely not a pool. TJ kicks at the dirt and I shiver as I see a small spider skitter across the ground. Either she's lost it and we're doing nothing here, Oh, we're digging a grave. Okay, I'm glad that Chase is on the right page for once. So, all right. Just that, that seems practical. Just we've had some. He's been he's been, he's been very oblivious for a long time in some cases in the past. So I didn't know if he was just gonna like not question the most obviously telegraphed grave ever. <laughs> oh come on, Chase. This was a bad idea. I hear the garage door opening and shut my mouth. A car engine starts up, and then I see an old, rusty, white sedan pull out of the driveway. Janice waves at us and blows a kiss, which I'm pretty sure is directed at TJ. And oh, she wow. peels off like Damn. she's drag racing to the diner that's less than a mile away. So, who do you think she's on her way to murder? Stop. I look back at TJ. You think she even put her pants on? Mm. TJ shudders and looks back That's at the a ground. Good question. That's what I was wondering. 
I'm a, I'm in, I'm synced up with Chase right now. We're saying all the same things. Yeah, that's kind of a it's a bad sign. <laughs> it just means Chase is paying attention in this scene. Let's let's just get this done. Then I promise I won't do any more chores for her. Okay? I sigh. All right. Just remember whose fault this is if it ends up being our grave. This work is tougher than I thought it would be. We both start at opposite ends of the little trench thing we're making. Jenna said that we should do more than three feet if we could, but if this whole thing but if this whole thing is bullshit, which I'm sure it is, then I'm not doing any more than the minimum. I'm at least glad to see TJ returning back to his cheerful, bubbly self. We even almost got into the dirt clo we almost the we even almost get into a dirt clod of war, but that comes to, with, to a quick end when I hit TJ in the thigh with a rock filled Dude, one. That's why uh, you don't. That's why you don't throw dirt clods. Yeah. Have you have you ever done that? No. It seems like a bad plan. I hear about that, and it apparently is a norm for a lot of people. I would never do that. That seems inherently mean. Yeah. About two hours later, the sun is comfortably low, and we're all a little half, a little over halfway done. It's at that point that I get a text message from Carl. I take a quick glance at my phone, seeing a one-word apology of sorry. I look at it for a while until TJ finally peers up. Everything okay? I debate whether or not to tell him, now that he's in such a good mood. It's hard to tell exactly what will make TJ feel better or worse, I've come to realize. Still, I think he can tell who it's probably from already, judging by how slanted back his ears are. It's from Carl. It just says sorry. Ah. <laughs> TJ stops digging, pressing his shuffle into the darker, moist dirt at the bottom of the trench. That's it? Look at that face. That's it. Are you going to respond? I don't know. Should I? TJ starts dicking again. Yeah. TJ tilts his head down. I need to apologize too. Now that seems more like TJ. Well, what should I say? TJ stops dicking again and looks up at me. Um... I look up at him expectantly. Okay, so... I'm trying to be more assertive, like you said. Uh, oh? I didn't expect him to say that. Is that why... TJ looks down, so I stop myself. Is that why he'd acted so strange at Carl's mansion? Sorry, never mind. What were you saying? So I'm just gonna say this. I was thinking about that treasure hunt Carl found. For a moment, I don't know what he's talking about. Oh, the thing he found in the crawl space. I was thinking... TJ leans on the shovel's handle, looking away. Thinking we should open it. Together. Okay... I say it slowly, realizing how delicate of a topic this is. Is there a reason why you want to open it? TJ sighs deeply, looking up at the deep red and orange sky. I feel like... I always feel like things happen for a reason, and we were just talking about finding closure yesterday. Okay. So, I feel like this might be a way to do it, maybe. Read what he... he had to say. Maybe go on one of his last hunts. TJ swallows hard. I can sort of see where he's coming from. Sydney always wrote stupid riddles and stories with his treasure hunts. It might, mean, it might mean something to read something he wrote so long ago. Okay. I keep coming up short with what I have with what I want to say. Again, I can see why TJ might think this is the answer, but I'm not so sure. Well, um I guess I can ask Carl about it. Did you want everyone there? Maybe... 
Maybe just us. We can let the others read it later if they want. I don't think Flynn... <laughs> I nod quickly. <laughs> uh, understandable. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So you, uh... Want to do that tomorrow? Um... See if we can do it tonight. We've only got a few days left, and this is making me nervous. PJ gives a, a tight laugh. Yeah, Sydney's treasure hunts could be pretty elaborate. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's not what he's thinking about. <laughs> Are we starting to be able to talk about him normally again? Maybe TJ's right about this. Okay. I'll text him back and ask if I can call him. Okay. It takes me a little bit to figure out how to word TJ's request. That is kind of... A you want to go word. on our dead friend's last treasure hunt to bond and get in closure? So, I mean, I kind of understand, like, TJ's, like, um, his whole route being further back in terms of, like, what you should play first. And it works out kind of nice, because I don't think the average player would pick TJ as their fir first route. He's kind of unassuming. I feel like there's a lot of more, like, dynamic characters you you would pick first. But I get the, um... I get the feeling that his route might be the most revealing of what actually happened in terms of, like, Sydney and everything like that. In fact, like, we've I mean, already the seen fact more. That we're even, the fact that we're even discussing Sydney directly is its own thing. Like, it's like, a, it's like a mystery that was set up at the very beginning of this whole adventure, but then, like, has had very little follow-up of any kind. I just feel like the, like, the creators of this game kind of knew it, at the beginning, like, choice. You probably, you probably, given the circumstance, be less likely to pick TJ. Like, the, there's almost a Sound off in the con- <laughs> I mean, the, the- Let us know in the comments if you did not read a recommended route order, who did you pick first? Yeah, is what I would yeah. say. Because, because the thing because, is that so many people re do a recommended route order, which yeah, is not what we're I'm not talking which to. Which is you. not the one we're following either. If you had to pick, because like personally, I would not have picked TJ first. Just gauging how, like the dynamics of the characters, um, how interesting they were to me, and how far out they stood in terms of, of like how uh, much influence I thought they'd have in the story. I think TJ's route so far has had the most insight into that specific incident. <clears throat> but he was not the person who I thought would be the person you should follow for that specific uh, insight. I All I can do is anecdote. and I wouldn't have picked him first. What I've generally heard from people is... I've heard a number of people that pick TJ because they feel bad that because he, he like ran off and was getting yelled at so they want to pursue him and find out what's going on with him uh whether they know that's even a route order choice or not that's just in that moment they want to find tj because of what happened Dude, I'm then there's, a, I'm then there's a mean people kid. who want to go with leo because they're attracted to Cause, him because he's hot and then there's people who want to go to flynn because he seems interesting and they want to figure out what his deal is it's to me. It sounds like Jenna and Carl are the least popular options if you pick blind without any advice, because Carl and Jenna have almost nothing going on at that point. Well, like there's no intrigue. Personally, I thought so. Okay, so I like TJ, TJ quite a lot currently. He was the most irritating to me at the beginning. I thought he was kind of a uh, whiny. So I would not have picked him. So I was like, oh, let, let him go like sulk by himself, like this little baby. Like, I, th I honestly, I, I think that he's initially, he comes off as, like, really irritating. Um, Flynn is, kind of comes off as an asshole. Jenna um, is just going to follow TJ, so I wouldn't really follow her either. Carl, maybe, just because he's, he's going to sit there. I, I don't think Leo is attractive. So, like, <laughs> I don't know who I'd pick, honestly. I would not pick TJ, is all I'm going to say, because I thought he was being a baby. I might have picked TJ first. Maybe I would have, but... I was most interested in... I think... I think I would have picked either Leo or TJ first. I, I kind of uh, hated them all at the beginning. Flynn so. is... There's a curiosity about what Flynn's deal is, but mostly I just don't want to be anywhere near him because he's, like, exactly the type of, like... 
like quote unquote truth teller that's like insufferable at the, the beginning the, of the game the, in particular. The, the, the too straightforward friend you have who says who says stuff and they're like people like me because I'm honest. <laughs> Which is the most infuriating thing anyone can say to you. Because they're, they're so full of shit. It's just their weird self-image that they've built of themselves. Like, in reality, it means that you can't, like, say truth with a tactful, like, air to it. Because, like, people can say, like... People who are good at talking can say, like, immensely hurtful things or immensely beautiful things. Or, like, say all these things and guise it in a way that is adequate depending on how well they are speaking. So, like, being like, oh, like, I'm really honest means you don't know how to, like, hide what you're saying in, like, layers of language. It just, it just means that you're, like, you're untactful. It's also, like... People can't handle me because I'm so honest. It's also revealing in a in a way to you that you is not intended. Because when you behave that way, you're often just revealing your own, like, biases and grudges more so than any kind of, like, universal truth. And then it's framed as, like, being a truth teller. But no, you're... Being honest and being truthful are not the same thing. You're letting your feelings out, but that doesn't mean that they're accurate uh, estimations of who that person is or what or what they're like. It's just your weird grudge you have against them half the time. No, you can be very truthful and you can be honest, but like, I'll, it's about how you say it. So I think Flynn is really inadequate in that sense, but I have an interest in, fin in Flynn because I think he does have nice things to say. I think he's just bad at saying them. But I don't. I didn't feel that way with the initial interaction. I want to make a Twitter poll, but I don't think I can make that many options. Where I'd be like, "Did you pick this character? Which of these five characters did you pick?" But also a fifth, a sixth option for I followed a route slash guide thing, and a seventh option for I haven't played Echo. I don't think you can have that many options on Twitter. Why, why don't you put like a, a sixth and seventh in like parentheses in the bottom? Be like, "Don't vote if you did either of these two things." Uh, people will vote no matter what. Um, it's just known that you need to have like a some kind of like neutral leftover option at the end for the people that just want to see the results, but don't but are gonna ruin the data. No, oh. yeah, I can see that. Especially in a situation where probably most people probably haven't played Echo that will randomly see the poll, and I think among the people that have played Echo, I might wager to even say that the majority just follow advice about how to play it correctly. And so, like, if you that, that that would ruin the data so much if you're trying to get anything about what people pick randomly. I don't know. I mean, if like if these people were in front of me and the interaction happened, I'd probably say A. I'd follow Jenna because I thought she was cute, or B. I'd follow Flynn because I was like, "What the fuck were you doing? That was very bad." You did that all wrong. Like yeah. you should have said it like this, and I probably those are the two options I probably would have like fallen into the most. Yeah. Hey man, can TJ and I come over and talk? While we wait for Carl's response, TJ abruptly looks back up at me. Are you and Carl um friendly with each other? We'll check her out one. Huh? I mean, how he kissed you. What? No. I laugh. That was just Carl being drunk. Okay. TJ goes back to digging, his ears twitching around. I grin. What, are you jealous? No! He says it way too fast and loud. Hey, if you want to give me a kiss, I don't mind. Yes, Snowflake. <laughs> TJ doesn't <re> <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, what a thing to stick to. <laughs> Snowflake. I mean, do you want to kiss? <laughs> I'll I mean, kiss I'll, you. I'll give you one if you want. I'll kiss you right here, Snowflake. If you want. Yes, TJ Snowflake. doesn't respond, instead focusing hard on the ground he's digging up. Aw, uh, if you're shy, I can do it instead. Oh my gosh, Chase. I see his eyes widen, but he still doesn't say anything. I make kissy sounds at him, and that's when he <laughs> flings some dirt up at me, smattering my pants with dark brown spots. I don't really want Chase to kiss CJ. Aw, uh, come on. TJ is nice. I don't, I don't want Chase involved with this nice individual. <laughs> spoil him. Yeah, do not spoil him with your fucking... 
gross indecisiveness <laughs> and your wishy-washiness and your lack of morals. <laughs> You're a Chase bad is guy, the serpent Chase. and the apple of Eden is gay because he's... Mm. <laughs> I see TJ smirk as he goes right back to work. Dude. I'm thinking about picking up another dirt clod, but that's when my phone buzzes again. Okay. And so we set up for a treasure hunt. I um am alarmed that I feel like the treasure hunt is getting set up to potentially. No, it's going to be tonight, I guess. But I was worried that the when they started setting up the treasure hunt, that it might start aligning with like the descent into madness of the town. <laughs> like it's going to be a very spooky treasure hunt. Still could be. I mean, that just sounds pretty fun. You just you dug up the horrible monster thing. Congrats! Unspeakable evil has uh, been unleashed on town. Go to Janice's house, dig beneath the floorboards, go to Clint's <laughs> house, go in the attic, go to Brian's house, go to his <laughs> his uh, shed in the back. It's, it's, oh, weird. X marks the spot. It's right under Brian's trailer. <laughs> oh, what could be here? This is the worst thing that's ever happened. 